adding a phone call to your year-end strategy will greatly accelerate your response rate and see your income soar in those all-important last months of the year. Watch this video to see what it takes to get to perfection when making a year-end call. Let's get started. In June of 1992, our daughter was born with cerebral palsy. Soon after, she was evaluated and given an 8 out of 10 on a severity scale, with 10 being the most severe. As you can imagine, my wife and I were devastated. The prospect of long-term medical care and physical therapy and the cost of that care hit us especially hard. We live on donations from individuals who support our efforts through the organization we work with. Working for a nonprofit, our insurance was adequate, but not enough to cover all the expenses necessary to care for our daughter. Since much of the treatment and care of our daughter was above usual and customary according to doctors and insurance, we had to pay a lot of the expenses out of our pocket. We immediately turned to our most supportive donors for help. We sent out a letter at year end to all our donors or partners letting them know of the situation and that we would need quite a bit of additional donations to help cover the immediate and ongoing costs of the medical expenses not covered by insurance. So many of our donors responded with generous gifts. However, the response from one partner really impacted us for years to come. I called a partner soon after the letter was mailed, and she responded back with a voicemail asking me to call her immediately, just as we were heading out of town for Christmas with my parents. This was pre-cell phone, so I decided to call her on a payphone along our journey south. She asked me to share more in detail about my daughter's special needs and what was required financially for us. After hearing, she shocked me by saying that she would commit to help to cover any of my daughter's expenses that were not covered by insurance, that she would never let us get in debt. I was so moved that I, all I could muster was a hearty, thank you so much. And she was true to her word until her death in 2009. That phone call is etched in my mind, and that was nearly 30 years ago this year. Phone calls with partners, especially like that, are meaningful and will never be replaced by letters or texts. A phone call brings a connection and is an important part of a year-end appeal strategy. There are four key steps to finding perfection in calling at year-end. They are as follows. Step number one, who to call. Since year-end is such a busy time for most nonprofits just like you, it's important that you maximize your time and efforts. If all or most of your mailing list is getting an appeal letter, the next step will be determine who out of that list you will call. A good appeal letter will yield a response rate of between 2 and 3%. Adding a phone call to that and that response rate jumps to 28%. Let me repeat that. The response rate jumps to 28%. So calling is without a doubt an important component. But who will you call? Typically, I'm going first to call my critical few, those 20% who give 80% of the money given to your organization. Depending on the size of your organization, that could be anywhere between 50 and 100 names if you're a typical small to mid-sized organization. Larger organizations, this might be 250 to 500 names. There may be some critical few donors who you wish to visit at your end, and we'll discuss that on a future video. But knowing how busy the donor is and you are at your end, calling may be your best option. Step number two, planning for the call. If you're like most nonprofit leaders, you probably have more email addresses than phone numbers. You'll have phone numbers for approximately 20 to 30% of your donors. That means you're going to want to spend some preparation time getting phone numbers for as many of the remaining names as you can. 
If you're a part of a larger nonprofit, there are services that will look up phone numbers for you, but often most nonprofits use volunteers to look up names online. This is a good task for someone who wants and needs flex time at home, possibly after the kids have been put to bed. Calling scripts are invaluable for year-end calls. Whether you have a team of seasoned callers or a handful of volunteers, it's so important to have a detailed script with specifics on the cause concept, that's the project or program mentioned in the year-end letter. Include two to three stories of actual changed lives that came about as a result of this program or project. Emotional givers can't get enough of stories. Calling scripts, at the very least, act to prime the pump on calling. They at least get the caller over the awkward hump of those initial calls. It seems that after about three to five calls, a rhythm or pattern begins to develop and calls seem to get easier. That leads me to the importance of calling many donors or partners all at once. If possible, set aside a two to three hour block of time to call individuals. Sporadic calling never allows you to actually get into a flow and will make the process much more difficult than it has to be. You may be tempted to call when it's most convenient for you, like Thursday morning from 9 to 11 a.m., but that might not be a good time for your donors. You might find that it's easier to reach donors in the late afternoon at the office or in the evenings at home. I realize that calling at home at night might not be the best time for you, but there's a reason why we get those telemarketing calls around dinner time. I don't at all want you to compare yourself with telemarketers. You're bringing a much more important message, but those organizations call at night for a reason. Consider going to work at 1 p.m. and work until 8 some days to be able to call into the night, or work in the morning, take the afternoon off and call at night but look for a way to make it work. You may even find that weekends work better than weekdays. Over the years, I've found Saturday afternoons to be a very successful time to call as many people get their chores done in the morning, leaving afternoon to rest before going out in the evening. I realize that it might not be easy to gear up to call on weekends, but this calling campaign is just a few weeks out of the year and you'll find adding a call at the best time for donors is highly fruitful. Step number three, who will call? The assumption is always that the executive director and or the development director will call at year end, and that's very true. But there may also be board members, program directors, or volunteers who may also be equipped to make phone calls. Without a doubt, the executive director should call the top 5 to 10% of your donors because people of wealth want to talk to the decision maker in the nonprofit. The development director can call the next 5 to 10%. But there may be a nice number of donors still left that could be called by board, staff, or volunteers. I especially like employing board members because it gives them ownership in the cause and helps them share the burden with staff of raising money for the organization, but it also connects them with other donors. And that creates a special bond as together they're making a difference. That's a kindred spirit that develops. Step number four, what to address on the call. When following up on a letter, sometimes the phone call can be as simple as, did you get the letter? How much will you be able to help? However, it's amazing how people don't remember getting the letter or perhaps never got the letter at all. That's why a call is so important. If the donor didn't get the letter and doesn't remember getting it, the perfect call contains three key ingredients, information, opportunity, and call to action. You'll want to initially and briefly address the overall problem that exists that caused you to create the program or project mentioned in the letter. You'll then want to address the opportunity that exists that needs funding. I've found that donors respond better to opportunities to be involved rather than needs that need to be met. Everyone wants to be involved in some way in something exciting or something that's making a difference. Using facts and figures at this point lets the logical giver know how this program or project is changing lives and what it's and what expanding 
adding on or growing the program will do to change even more lives. And that usually includes additional funding. That's where the call to action comes in. A call to action includes an actual appeal for funds. Just put it out there. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, will you consider a gift of $1,000, $2,500, or even $5,000 to help at this time and wait for their response? This can lead to a moment of awkward silence, but oftentimes the delay is due to the donor processing if and how they can give, not necessarily looking for a way out. If you respond again before they respond, you may short circuit the process. Make sure that if they respond in the affirmative, that you have an easy way for them to give. I recommend sending them to a website or sending them a text to give if that's an option with your organization. If they ask for more time, be sure to set a specific time you will call them to get the response. Don't leave it open-ended or in their court to call you back. It just won't happen. If you say no, just thank them and let them know how much you appreciate their participation and partnership. If you're a faith-based organization, ask if there's anything for which you can be praying. Be sure to send a thank you for any positive response. Adding a phone call to a year-end appeal letter will increase your response rate from 2 to 3% to 28%, making the call worthwhile even if the person doesn't give. You need to see this as another touchpoint moment in your relationship with the donors. Just getting an opportunity to connect, to share your vision and heart and passion makes the call worth your time. Calling can be scary and intimidating, but oh so rewarding. Don't intentionally skip an opportunity to make a difference in their life and yours. Include a perfect call into your year-end strategy today. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends or colleagues. There's no cost to you. We're building a movement through a community of life changers and it's my desire that by subscribing, you'll learn principles and practices that help you secure the resources necessary to accomplish your mission and change the world. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. We're also adding valuable content to our Life Changers Facebook group, so go out there to become a member as well. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a major donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before, change more lives, and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.